Well, the internal security measures of the uh, Lincoln administration were taken, I, I think we need some way of measuring the, the uh, measuring the suitability of the internal security measures taken by administrations in war. And I have, uh, I always think that we ought to measure them by one, the amount of provocation. Uh, and uh, second, uh, whether they exceeded the threat and were used for other reasons than internal security, right? So in other words, how great was the threat? And second, even if there is a great threat and you put in place certain internal security measures that curb civil liberties, do you also use them to your advantage in political and other kinds of ways? And then third, the, the, the final question is, when the threat relaxes, do you relax those measures? Right? And it seems to me that if we apply that test to Lincoln and the Civil War, that one has to give Abraham Lincoln fairly high marks. Now, in terms of provocation, there's never been a provocation like it. And furthermore, there uh, have been um, uh, shocking restrictions of civil liberties in wars in the United States uh, where there was no equal uh, provocation in World War I. In World uh, War II, uh, both. Uh, and uh, so there I think uh, the provocation was so great that uh, we can give Lincoln some room to say, well, I've got to restrict civil liberties in this way or in this place. Mm -hmm. uh, and second then, uh, were they used for other purposes? And, and uh, on that, Lincoln kept a pretty close watch. Uh, he, by and large, believed in the two-party system. Uh, he uh, did not want the, the restrictions on civil liberties, which were put in place to arrest uh, 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 people who were escaping the draft or possible spies or saboteurs, um, any um, number of sort of legitimate internal security reasons. Uh, of course, it's also convenient if you could use them to arrest political uh, critics of the mm -hmm. administration. Uh, that he, he did not want to see happen. It did occasionally happen. Uh, a, but in general, he, uh, uh, he did not want that to happen. I think in general we can say that it didn't happen. Uh, the, uh, uh, although there were newspapers that were occasionally suppressed for a time, uh, they come back into operation and plenty of newspapers weren't. I mean, there, there's a, a, a loud and clamorous voice against the administration for uh, the whole uh, war. And so it, it is not in any systematic way and, with, and certainly with no intent from the administration in Washington used to suppress the loyal opposition which is a sort of key test of it. Uh, and then finally, the third test, does he relax it when the threat is not as great? Well, here we have a problem, uh, and that is at about the time he would have been doing that, Lincoln was assassinated. So we don't get to see his record, well, when it's completely relaxed, does he relax all these restrictions on civil liberties that uh, allow the military to arrest people without charge? But we do get a little glimpse of it in one place, in Missouri um, in early 1865. Lincoln decides that Missouri, which has basically been under martial law for most of the war uh, to take care of the uh, terrible guerrilla warfare that uh, raged in uh, Missouri, um, he decides after, uh, in the beginning of 1865 that any Confederate threat to Missouri is over. It's not going to be invaded anymore. And that the persistence of martial law there is uh, uh, no longer necessary. So he writes the civil authorities in Missouri and says, um, why don't you start relaxing this? He writes the new Republican governor there and suggests uh, such a plan. Well, the politicians in Missouri have become very comfortable with martial law. Voting in Missouri in the election of 1864, the voter turnout fell by 37 percent. That's a whole party's worth of votes. So basically, the Democratic Party has all but disappeared in Missouri. Yeah. And that's very comfortable for Republican politicians. And they are not comfortable with relaxing the military restrictions that have uh, permitted them considerable leeway, 
right? And so they refuse to do it. So uh, Lincoln gives up on the civil politicians in Missouri and sends a military commander to uh, begin relaxing martial law there, to convince uh, the elected civil authorities in Missouri that they've got to give up on this system. And it's, um, if it weren't such a serious matter, it would be almost humorous because here we have a general in epaulets. He sent John Pope, created a new military district to be able to send him there. He sent John Pope, and so here we have a general in epaulets lecturing the elected officials in Missouri uh, on the people's will and they must not frustrate it with uh, martial law uh, and that it's uh, very dangerous to continue this, this situation. So we have the, the military uh, lecturing the civil authorities on liberty. But that's what happened and it's a good sign, the best sign we have, that when the threat was relaxed, uh, Lincoln was going to relax the internal security measures too.